pre-brief as an example of crew resource management and trauma resuscitation. Trauma resuscitations are notorious for being chaotic as patients are frequently brought to the emergency department with little notice of potentially life-threatening injuries. Even at level 1 trauma centers, teams rarely have more than 5 to 10 minutes to prepare. Having established protocols in place for personnel and process is useful, but as these patients may present at any time of day or night, it is rare that two identical teams will participate in any two trauma resuscitations. As one can imagine, this scenario is prone to human error, which may result not from lack of knowledge, but from other factors such as poor communication, inadequate situational awareness, and a lack of teamwork. Crew resource management was designed by NASA in 1979 and has been adopted by the airline industry as a key component to enhancing safety as human error has been recognized to be the primary cause of all aviation accidents. The trauma and emergency medicine teams at Vanderbilt University Medical Center have adopted this methodology and apply it towards our trauma resuscitations where some of the sickest patients present and frequently require immediate attention. We utilize concepts of crew resource management by performing a pre-brief before each major trauma resuscitation. This pre-brief consists of team introduction including identification of the trauma team leader. The trauma team leader then gives the entire resuscitation team a synopsis of what we understand the casualty's injury to be. This allows the team to be prepared to handle possible life-threatening injuries and intervene for patients with airway compromise, pneumothorax, traumatic brain injury, or hemorrhagic shock. In order to best train staff at our institution, standardized patient videos were created to illustrate these techniques and these videos comprise part of the training that we feel is essential in order for our resuscitation team to function at its best. The purpose of this video is to present four standardized pre-briefs, demonstrate how the pre-brief can be used as a crew resource management tool, and describe how the pre-brief can improve situational awareness and allow the resuscitation team to quickly focus on life-threatening injuries by verification as opposed to discovery. Okay, let's have a pre-brief, please. I'm Chrissy Coleman, EM resident, airway. Chief Brown, TV attending. I'm Chris, secondary paramedic. I'm Anita, RA scrap. Jackson, the tech. I'm Kevin, the medical student. Brenda, primary nurse. Kyla, trauma junior. Julie, respiratory therapy. Rick Miller, trauma team leader. Pre-brief employs crew resource management strategies by establishing a verbal checklist and roll call of the involved personnel. Making sure that everyone is in place and introduced to other members of the team that might be new opens the line of communication in the event of a problem. Okay folks, we have an 18 year old unrestrained passenger that has a starburst to the windshield. The patient allegedly is, uh, has sonorous respirations and may need an airway. The information provided in this pre-brief alerts the resuscitation team to a potential airway problem. Prior to patient arrival, the team can make sure that adequate equipment to establish a difficult airway is available. When the patient arrives, confirmation of respiratory distress is top priority, and if that is confirmed, the team is ready to intubate the patient. Please. I'm Chrissy Coleman. I'm the ER resident for the airway. Chris, I'm paramedic, secondary. Anita, RN, scrub. Jackson, tech. Brenda, primary nurse. Kyla, trauma junior, secondary survey. Rick Miller, the trauma team leader. Okay, folks, we have an 18-year-old that was the restrained passenger involved in a single car motor vehicle collision. The driver was killed at the scene. Uh, according to EMS and Life Flight, the patient is hemodynamically stable, complaining of belly and hip pain. The second pre-brief goes through the introductions again, identifying the team members and readying them for the resuscitation. The clinical vignette describes a patient involved in a motor vehicle crash with significant mechanism as there was a fatality at the scene. The team is alerted to the possibility of blunt solid organ injury and possible pelvic fracture based on the complaints of abdominal and hip pain. In this scenario, a fast exam and pelvis film may be helpful in the initial stages of resuscitation. 
Preemptively, one of the team members may place orders for a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis as well. All right, folks, let's have a pre-brief, please. Chrissy Coleman, ER resident, airway. I'm Chris, secondary paramedic. Anita Scott. Jackson, tech. Brenda, primary. Tyler, trauma junior, secondary service. Julie, respiratory therapy. All right, I'm Rick Miller, the trauma team leader. Um, report says that we have an 18-year-old that was the unrestrained passenger involved in a high-speed motor vehicle collision. The driver was killed at the scene. This patient was unresponsive at the scene, has now been intubated, and there's been reports of hypotension. Um, and Life Flight's bringing the patient in. Any questions? Again, this illustrates team introduction. The mechanism in this case is similar to the previous patient, but the acuity of this patient is much greater than before. This patient has already been intubated, which may have been secondary to altered mental status and traumatic brain injury. In addition, the patient is hypotensive, which indicates hemorrhagic shock. The team is focused on resuscitating a hemodynamically unstable patient with possible neurologic injury. In this case, the FAST exam, radiographs, and blood component therapy may be necessary. By pre-briefing the team prior to the patient's arrival, situational awareness can be significantly improved. Confirmation of suspected hemodynamic parameters or injuries will likely hasten this patient towards appropriate treatment. Dr. Coleman, ER resident, airway. I'm Chris, I'm paramedic, secretary. Jackson, Tech. Brenda, Primary. Kyla, Trauma Junior, Secondary Survey. Julie, Respiratory. Rick Miller, Trauma Team Leader. Uh, okay, folks, we have an 18-year-old that allegedly has been shot twice, once in the right chest and once in the left leg. Apparently, is hemodynamically stable, a little short of breath. So we may be putting in a chest tube and evaluating his lower extremity for vascular injury. Everyone got it? In the final pre-brief, introductions are again illustrated and are constant throughout this demonstration. This clinical scenario involves a patient with penetrating injury to the chest and lower extremity. The team leader has primed the resuscitation team to be prepared for possible chest tube placement. Supplies can then be readied prior to the patient's arrival. Also, as the patient has a potential for lower extremity vascular injury, a Doppler can be brought to the trauma bay to check ankle brachial indices. We have demonstrated how principles of crew resource management can be applied to the trauma resuscitation. Team introductions open lines of communication that may be necessary in the event of an emergency. A brief clinical vignette may increase situational awareness to the possible urgent needs of the incoming patient. By knowing where to focus attention, the team members can immediately confirm the presence or absence of an injury and proceed accordingly.